Well, good morning, everybody. This is Dean Tenney uh, coming to you from my studio in fabulous Las Vegas with a explicated practice test, uh, Series 65. Uh, Chris has been kind enough to let us uh, share the ride with him as we go through these questions. If you don't have a Kaplan Q Bank, I highly recommend it as a paid supplement. Uh, you can get 10% off with my Guru 10 discount code. And for that commercial, Kaplan allows you to have a free look at Kaplan content. Uh, basically, what we'll be doing is I'll be reading the question, question one of 130. Uh, by the way, you know, uh, Chris needs to build up his mental stamina. Him and I will be here for the entire duration. But remember, if you're watching on video, you can always hit pause, get into a beverage, come back to it. Uh, but remember, when you, once you start the slog that is the real test, you, you can still take breaks, but it won't be like you can hit pause and come back, you know, two hours later or something. Uh, okay, so uh, we'll begin. The uh, journey of 130 questions begins with the first. A registered broker dealer would not be able to open an account for, okay. A deceased individual. Uh, right on, you're saying a deceased individual, which is A, and you are at 100%. Question two, Gaston is a police officer and wishes to contribute to a retirement plan sponsored by the city. Gaston wants flexibility being able to have unfettered penalty-free access to his funds before reaching age 59 and a half. This can only be accomplished if. See? Uh, you, you got that wrong. This one is a funky one. And it's a funky one because 457s are not under ERISA. Ah, okay. They're okay. Gotcha. Yeah. So this is the 457, kind of a funky one. And it's typically employees of a city sponsored by the city. So that was our clue. And okay. Funds before reaching 59 and a half. Typically, you're using uh, money that you've, uh, it's, it's a form of deferred compensation for yeah. police officers, firemen, uh, that kind of thing. Okay. Okay. All right. A married couple has lived in the same home for 40 years, and now all the children are gone. They've decided to sell and move. Oh, well, well, hold on here. Did I forget to start the recording? That's pretty bad. Oh, I'm going to say, I hate to go through this, and we haven't actually recorded the thing. Um, uh, they purchased the home for $80,000. they have accepted a contract for $800,000. Ooh, sounds good. The tax consequence of the sale is. Oh, I know this one. Oh, no, I know this one. <laughs> I literally saw this one the other day. No. Okay, hold on. Let me let me walk it through. Let me okay, walk it through. Okay. So they're a married couple. Dean, I'm going to go with A. Uh, it's actually uh, choice uh, to 220000 I okay. think it's very low probability you're going to see this. Okay. The first 250 is excluded mm -hmm. from the tax. There's two of them. So that's 500 that's included, uh, dis excluded from the tax. So okay. once we exclude that, 800 minus the uh, exclusion, it's going to be a reportable gain of 220. Again, very low yes. probability. Okay. In order to compute the real rate of return for security, it would be necessary to know all the following except, all the following except. The beta of the security? Excellent, excellent, right? Beta is that stuff about modern portfolio theory and all that kind of yeah. stuff, excellent. On a Uniform Securities Act, which of the following is an agent? Which of the following is an agent? D. An individual who affects securities transactions for commissions, you are correct. Uh, which of the long statements about diversification through asset class allocation are true, are true? Okay, so two is true. 
Okay, so all my answers, but A have two. Okay, so that's good. So it takes out A. Excellent. I love your I love your approach. Okay. And a defensive investment strategy. Okay. Diversification involves investing in portfolio in at least 20 different the same all of the same asset class. Okay, no. Um two and three. Excellent. Excellent. I love that. that was a perfect attack plan as a test taker, Chris. I mean, the way you went, I, I call that process of elimination, right? You took your one thing you knew to be true, and then you got another thing you knew not to be true, and you levered your way into the correct answer. Excellent. Uh, the administrators just notified Rockland Securities that its application to operate as a broker dealer in this state is now effective. Which of the following parties would be considered registered? Which of the following parties would be considered registered? One, two, and three. Excellent. Excellent. Love it. That was a good one, man. If, if I were in charge, I'd give you extra points on that one. That wasn't as uh, easy as it kind of looked, so to speak. Uh, which of the is responsible for the administration of the Bank Secrecy Act? Hmm? <laughs> oh, <laughs> I love Kaplan. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go. Let's do this. Okay, so you have the SEC. You have the FRB, you have who are the other I'm just gonna I'm gonna shoot in the wind, I'm gonna say B. Uh you are incorrect. It's FinCEN, it's called FinCEN, the Financial Crimes Enforcement okay. Network. So we file our SARS, okay, CPRs, the SEC. Oh, so that that's where the uh when um well, you said the when someone puts money into a bank account. Yeah, structuring, place. Got you. Okay, got you. Right. Okay, no, no, no. That's, that's all We're right. Good. That's okay. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. Okay. All right. That's all right. So, uh, which of the following bond strategies involves purchase, uh, purchasing only short-term and long-term bonds? Uh, barbell. Right on. I just got to wait to remember that. I just go... Short, long, yeah. barbell. There you go. There you go. Um, a seventy-four-year-old widower has been your client since his early fifties. He's a well-informed investor and has always seemed capable of understanding most investment concepts that you have presented. At least twice a year, the two of you meet to evaluate his current financial situation objectives. In your last meeting, it seemed to you he was distracted and somewhat forgetful. It would be appropriate for you to do all the following except all the following except. Uh, D. Right on. Good job. Now see something, say something. The National Securities Market Improvement Act, NIMSMI, affects federal and state laws in that. You use a saying all the time, He's, and I'm gonna go with that saying. I'm gonna say the answer is, I'm I'm, I'm banking on that. I remember what, what the word preempt means. The answer is A. You're correct. Okay, yeah. Kaplan. <laughs> I would tell you the Kaplan jerks are bigger jerks than the real jerks. Like Chuck is the guy in charge of uh, this yeah. stuff, and his grammar and his vocabulary are the legalese that is found on the test. And so, uh, Chris, I love doing situations like this on a shared screen because. Can you imagine our poor folks who even English is a second language? Because this, <laughs> this is in English to begin with, and you're correct. Well, I, I, I have you screaming in my head. <laughs> yeah, the so administrators cool. think they're God, and the SEC that's right, is God. That's right. So I was like, okay, good. the word preempt. That a preempt. Think means, about that. <laughs> I preempt. You know, uh, you know, I was at I'm building this place off the grid, and I got into a little bit with my brother's kind of contractor, 
And then my brother wanted me to apologize to him. And I said, Chris, your brother should preempt your contractor. <laughs> you should say, hey, my brother is one of your customers too. And you know, why don't you humor him by building the deck he wants instead of the deck that you know, he, he wants me to have. Right? So now for us, the two big things, Chris, remember, are the two buckets of a federally covered investment advisors mm-hmm. and federally covered securities. Excellent job. I love it. Uh, an investor is analyzing the impact of a specific type of risk affecting bonds because the fixed cash payments that they deliver may become less valuable. What risk is this? Interest rate risk? Oh, oh that was a bad miss. Oh, uh, no, no, no. Uh, whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Go ahead. No, no, no. We're trying to get a good score. You want to change yeah. your answer? Inflation risk. I'm sorry. Yeah. So if it would have been interest rate risk, it would have said the, the, an investor is only specific type of risk. And then it said, because interest rates may rise, that would be that mm-hmm. one. Right? Okay. I don't remember two, two big test questions. What might beat inflation over the long term? Common stocks. Common stock. What keeps uh, pace with inflation? Uh, tips. Yeah, tips. Being a limited yeah. partner, direct participation program is <laughs> and I can't even say that. Oh, Nogless, Nogless okay. to being. Nogless to being. Okay, so being a limited partner in a direct participation. What that means in plain network. English is like most similar to. Yeah, what is it similar to? Okay, so. A, it's not B. A holder of secured debt of a, of a corporate? No, because no, I want to say, but it's not liquid though. Ooh. Well, they're not. At, they're asking how they're similar. How they're similar? Who, who is it most similar to? I want to say D. Then you're correct, right? So just okay. say I'm a limited partner in the uh, Golden State Warriors and saying I'm an owner of the uh, Golden State Warriors is kind of the same thing. So it's Mm. the ownership position, right? Boom. All the following statements regarding convertible bonds are true, except all the following are true of convertible bonds, except. Let's see is the first one that is correct. Holders receive a higher interest rate. Hmm. Holders have a fixed interest rate. Hmm. The issuer pays a lower interest rate. Hmm. Or it does have a fixed interest rate because it's a bond. Dean, I want to say D. You are correct. You are correct. By the way, as a test taker, it can't be both higher and lower. Yeah. So I was in my, just to kind of in my mind, I was okay. So it does have a fixed interest because it's a bond. Yeah, that's right. And you, 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 you do have, have the ability to convert it because that's what a convertible bond is. So I was looking at A and D, like, okay, so. Is this one of those like two sides of the coin? That yeah, that's with? exactly what that is. And so okay. you say, Dean, this pays less than other bonds I've been looking at. I said, well, I'm not surprised, Chris. I mean, because this one can be converted into the common stock. So that's why the issuer adds that feature to lower the uh, cost on the bond. So excellent. Yeah. Accor- oh, my goodness. According to NASA's <laughs> statement of policy on unethical and dishonest business practices of broker dealers and agents in which of the funk situations has an agent acted improperly in uh, placing a client's order, in placing a client's order? Okay, that's, that's right. Agent asked by Oh, okay. Uh, 
non-discretionary account. Okay, so that possibly, okay. On his death, the agent received instruction. Okay, no. B. Excellent. Excellent. Remember, you can't make a decision about quantity, so excellent. Uh, one year ago, ABC Widgets funded an expansion to its manufacturing facilities by issuing a 20-year first mortgage bond. The bond is secured by uh, the building and the land. The bond was issued with a 5.5% coupon and is currently AA. The current market price of the bond is 105, resulting in a current yield of approximately. Can I use my whiteboard as my paper? Or... Sure, you should. You're good. By the way, the sheets you get, Chris, are going to be kind of similar to your, not quite as nice as your whiteboard, but <laughs> you know, two sheets of laminated paper. Oh, I don't even, I don't need to do this. Oh, well, I, I might, because. Well, yeah, I think you I should. Might. I like that. You should always size up a question and say, me. Well, I, I was, I was thinking about it because our, our seesaw, if it's selling at a premium. Oh, okay. You could, that's all good. You could certainly go about it that way as well. If you're that, that's if it's selling at a premium. I know that the current, the current, so the, well, it's going to be less than. The 5.5. So okay, gotta, so that the, the teeter trotter got you a 50 50. So you're correct. If yeah, it's at a premium, the current yield has to be something less than 5.5. And so that means it's either B or D. Oops, I'm just gonna let it go that 1,000 so par times 0. $55, $55 divided by 200. D? What'd you say? D? All right, good job. You did exactly the right thing. Fifty-five dollars divided by a thousand fifty, right? What it pays you, divided by what it costs you. A lot of extra stuff in this question it had nothing to do with answering the question. So it should be able to do current yields. Should be able to do current. Yeah. Yields. Uh, Perpetual Prosperity Advisors, a state registered investment advisor, files an application to withdraw its registration as a registered investment advisors. Records pertaining to uh, the client accounts must be. This was a state register. Um, you don't destroy. That takes up the. Because you could still be liable for issues. The state represented. So, is it your administrator that I'm do? Okay. The model rule just gives you a model for it. But I mean, that does place. Um, I want to say C. You are correct. Remember, that's typically five years for under the. <clears throat> Excellent. Hey, can, I, can I just ask you a question? Sure. So you, you don't have to. So with this, though, that period of time, do you send it to the administrator? No, 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 no. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that's where I was. One of my favorite days, Chris, when I retired was five years from the day I retired is to take all those baker's boxes and shred them. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. Okay. All right, so. 
uh, in a scheduled premium variable life insurance policy. All the following are guaranteed except. All the following are guaranteed except. Okay, so this would be a, a scheduled variable life insurance would be a universal life. Um, so you have a minimum death benefit. I know that, but it's a variable life insurance policy. Oh my God. Because a cash value wouldn't be guaranteed. That'd be a whole, okay. So I want to say A. Yeah, I, I would just tell you as your, your tutor, almost always, Chris, on the real test, I want you to trust your gut. So far, most of those first kind of flash responses you've had are been correct answers, right? Okay. So, excellent. A client who has a margin account is out of town for a week. The securities in the client's account fall dramatically, which requires the client to make immediate deposits into the account. Which of the following can, what, which of the, following can the agent do to assist the client. No, no, no. D. Right on, right on, right. <laughs> yeah, we don't lend customer A, customer B's money right now. Yeah, no. <laughs> A reduction of ridiculous. Da Damon Raymond is an agent with ABC Investment Planning, a registered broker dealer and investment advisor. Under what circumstances would Damon not have to obtain client consent when ABC Investment Planning is acting in a principal uh, capacity? So you're selling something from your company or your box. Okay. A client given ABC blanket permission to engage in this type of transaction. Trade is made related to the advisory relationship. Oh, the client terminates the advisor. I, I want to say B. Uh, it's not never. You should kind of st shy away from a socially pejorative terms like never accept. Like if it's a question, when can I rip off customers? Okay. Or always when it. And, you know, uh, so I'm assuming the answer is A then? The answer is uh, when it's unrelated to the, the advisor. Oh, relationship. okay. Right, you yeah, just call sure. me and want to do a trade, right? So, Chris, you're going to be, uh, as we talked about, it sounds like a mini conglomerate there. Mm -hmm. So, if I just call you and say, "Hey, buy a thousand shares of XYZ," and your broker dealer is a market maker in the security, and it has nothing to do with our advisory relationship and you nothing to do with our fiduciary relationship, then that, in that case, that. it would be a yeah, sure. okay. Okay. Included in the definition of a derivative would be all the following except. All the following except. A? Yeah, good job. That was a good job. Excellent. Yeah, ETFs are never derivatives. Yeah, good job. Good job. Okay. A measure of an investment return that takes into account the time value of money is... Okay, so rate of return is inflation. Internal rate of return is the internal interest rate. Risk adjusted. It's just you're adjusting it for the D. D is in dog. Yeah. 
No, but C, remember, I thought you were going to get that right because you said the internal rate of return. Oh, uh, okay. So I, I overthought that then. Yeah, because okay. yeah, internal All rate right. of return, remember, is present value to future value. Yeah, okay. Right. I internal over, rate I of return that. is what turns future value into net uh, to zero. So, do you know what I would have really done on the test? I would have checked it for review, came back to okay, it. And well, said, well, that okay. was the first time where I, because I thought you had it because you started talking about the internal rate of return and what it is. And uh -huh. I thought you were going to connect the dots of that internal rate of return being yeah. from point A to point B. Yeah. Not bad, not bad. That's okay. Okay. An investment advisor may state which of the following in an advisory contract, which of the following in an advisory contract. B. Yeah, very much a test question, right? So, excellent. If the Smiths want to open a joint account at A AAA Securities Corporation, have their securities transferred to their three daughters upon their death of the last surviving account holder, the agents should recommend the Smiths open up. Okay, so this is where if they want to avoid probate, basically. Um, so which ones avoid probate? Mm, 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 mm. Okay, so you wouldn't do D. All right, tenants in common. Oh, I believe that one avoids probate. Uh, the rights of survivorship. It passes straight to the survivor. Why would you need a TLD with a with a right of survivorship though? Because it already does that. I want to say B. Uh, well, you you actually were on the right track. Why would they do that? Because remember, the transfer on death. They wanted to go to the daughters when the last surviving account holder dies, right? So you were correct. They, the Smiths, right? Once Smith dies. Then it goes to the other Smith, and then it goes to the daughters. And so the answer was A. So, so they, okay, but okay if the Smith one, oh, 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 right? Oh, all of the, uh, okay, got you, got you. So, because they wanted to go from husband to wife or wife to husband, and then to the that's kids. right, exactly right. Got you. Okay. All right. I understand that. All right. An investor would write a call option. An investor would write a call option to A. Right on, right. Just but I gotta tell you, as, as your tutor, you're much, much stronger on mm -hmm. your uh investment component than uh, it seems like previously. So, uh, right, actually, I mean, good, good. so some of the stuff you're getting aim and shoot, point and click, which is is uh, you know good because that'll save you time that you can use elsewhere. The administrator may deny registration of an agent because the agent. The is under uh you said b no c was convicted of a felony within the past 10 years you are correct yeah uh the client of a broker dealer turns in an order to purchase ten thousand shares of xyz on the new york stock exchange this would be a block trade right on right on uh, an investment advisor registered in state A decides it wishes to maintain custody of customer assets. As long as the securities laws of state A do not prohibit custody, the inv investment advisor would have to promptly notify so there a state registered. So it's not A, it's not. I love it. I love it. Good, good attempt, not, my friend. It's not B. Okay, I want to say D. I love the attack plan on that question. Yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Uh, a free trade agreement is entered into between country A and country B. As time goes on, the value of countries A currency decreases while that of country B decreases. The effect on this will likely be. A 
Okay, so it says countries A goes down. Country B goes up. All right, so that means country B will be able to buy more of country A. Okay. That's correct. Countries A imports from country B will increase. No, it won't increase because it costs more for them to get stuff. Countries A exports to B will decrease. No, it will increase because it costs them. Country B's imports from countries A. I want to say D. That was excellent, my friend. That was a, a good economics lecture that you gave yourself. Love that. That was impressive. You should be giving uh, economic seminars there in your. <laughs> I miss those. I miss those questions so much. I forced well myself done. to say well okay. done. Hey. I think that's about as nasty as an, an economics question you could get about currencies. I love how you attacked it in terms of just visualizing it. Put it on your scratch, working your way through it. Uh, that was, if if the test was weighted, I would have given you uh, more than one point for that answer. All right, good, good. A, a type of trust created by a will that becomes operative at death, operative at death is. So I'm going to laugh at myself. The only reason why I think I remember this question is because I hate the word testamentary. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I love it. Is that your answer? You're correct. Yeah, that's my answer. You're correct. I that's my it. answer. Why do, why do you don't like it? Because it's like Old Testament or something? Yeah, well, because it's like an old, old word. But if you break <laughs> it down, it has, it has a real meaning that basically gives you the answer. So there you All go. Right, right. Good job. Excellent. Uh, with regard to ERISA and a qualified retirement plan, which of the following would not constitute a conflict of interest between the plan and a fiduciary? Okay, so it's asking us what would not be a conflict of interest, okay. B is a conflict of interest. Okay, hold on. So what is what is D asking? So a fiduciary participates in a transaction on the plan's behalf that involves a party with interests adverse to those of the plan to ensure favorable terms for the plan. Okay, so we're going to pause that real quick. Something, I mean, whatever. Okay. Can't do A. Can't do B. Can't. So I want to say D. D. A fiduciary participates in a transaction on the built path that involves a party with interest adverse to those of the plan. To uh, okay, that is okay. So I, I, that is a conflict. Of, oh, damn it. I hate these questions. These, yeah, they're, these they're, they're messy. They're messy. Now on the real test, they don't bury typically the knot in the middle. It's usually towards the end. So here, what's challenging is they burying this knot. You know, so what you might want to do as a test taker is maybe, uh, you know, what I like to do sometimes. Cross, is, cross it out. Yeah, I say, you know, is or is not as I reach each statement on my scratch paper. Right. That might be a something. fiduciary sells a real estate investment plan. So at the that is a conflict of interest. It is a conflict of interest indeed. A fiduciary receives a fee for acting as a trustee of the plan. Uh, in my mind, I say that's a conflict of interest, but okay. I mean, well, you know, so you're going to say, uh, does not constitute a conflict. Well, okay. So, judgment, you're correct. So, it is, you know, it, it, but it, you know, given these other ones, yeah, these other ones are kind of wonky. So, I mean, yeah, so I mean, you got to think what is the lesser evil here, I guess. Yeah, so the future that so C and D, the only reason I'm looking at D because I'm like, I mean, 
Well, they're good at the test. I love it where they put the comments. Say, if there was a reason to say that you could do it, it's because you're trying to get favorable terms uh, for yeah. the plan. Yeah, by the way, that's the, what the, the Teamster guy is going to say before he goes to jail. Okay. It's okay for me to get a Rolex because, you know, even it's though they best for the. So, then, still... so with, with that in mind, then B would be the right answer. Yeah. Then? Yeah. Okay. Even given these, given these choice of this answer set. Okay. Uh, indeed, given that answer set. Okay. And then just remember on those knots, you got to be just a little careful about is or is not. Sharon Smith is an investment advisor representative with High Water Advisors, a federally covered investment advisor with its principal office in State X. Sharon provides advisory services to a bank located in State X, a state in which she has no place of business. Under current regulations, Okay, so I want to say the answer is C. Because Highwater's principal office is in State X, Sharon would be required to register as an investment advisor. Oh, hold on, wait. No, no, I'm sorry. But she has no place of business. So there's a couple of key points here. This is not a broker dealer. This is a federally covered investment advisor. Yeah. Sharon is not an agent of a broker dealer. Sharon is an investment advisor rep of a federally covered investment advisor. But she's dealing with a bank, though. It doesn't matter if you are in a. So if you have a, so in that in that so if you have a client, you have to register as an IAO. Is that where you're? Well, I'm sorry. sorry. It's pretty straightforward. You're overthinking. I think, Chris. Let's be very clear. This is very testable. If I am an investment advisor rep of a federally covered advisor, all I need to register in the state is I have a place of business. Period. Full stop. That's it. I have no place of business. I can have any client I want in that state and not register in that state. So what, these, what this question is trying to do at Kaplan is cloud your mind okay. about what would be different for a broker dealer. If this were a broker dealer, then it would be important to know, you know, whether it's a bank or. A, yeah. A, okay. So, I mean, so just kind of like, cause you, 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 you caution, cause my first mindset was to go with C cause there's no place of business. She has no place of business. There. That's right. That's right. And C is your best answer. And that's the correct answer, by the way. Okay. All right. Got you. So you're, you're, you know, we yeah. kind of talked about this. We want to make yeah. sure that you are, you know, your flash responses are usually your best response. That's okay. proven thus far. The current yield of a callable bond selling at a premium is calculated by. What? Why do I do this? Callable bond income bonus. Current yield is current yield. That's that's correct. <laughs> um, current yield of a callable bond would be okay. So it would be a percentage of its. market value excellent excellent i was gonna be upset if you missed that because you just did this calculation came over yeah no i'm just i was sitting there like excellent. par value would be its uh nominal yield yeah excellent uh, oh look at that Woohoo! Yeah. showing off i love it oh no nah. one of your one of your existing clients wishes to open a new account in the name of his spouse and enter orders on her behalf um Okay, hold on. When your client, it isn't clients, let's just open a new account in the name of his spouse enters orders on her behalf. B. Excellent. Excellent. If a corporation issues mortgage bonds, all the following would be accept, uh, affected except. Okay, so your is, I need to. All right, so working capital. A mortgage bond. So working capital is current. 
hands. Okay. The liability will go up. Excellent. The assets will go up. Excellent. All right. So that means obviously working capital will go up. All right. So A. Excellent, man. That was another perfect execution, my friend. Perfect. Uh, I hope, I hope, I love your whiteboard. Every time you've been to that whiteboard, it's been a, a, a master class on how to attack a question. Uh, make sure you follow that same form, even though you're not going to have your big whiteboard. I love it. Go to the scratch paper. Use that, that scratch paper as your small whiteboard. And uh, that was excellent execution. On the Uniform Securities Act, an investment advisor's current clients uh, must be delivered a brochure Yes, you have to send the the, uh, the brochure every year. I know that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Annually, but only if the advisor has neither custody nor discretion. I want to say yes to that. Okay, so you send it annually. Whether or not right. the advisor has custody or discretion. No, because if you have custody or discretion, you have to send it more than that. I want to say D. Uh, I think I think this is a grammar uh, question because it's it's actually it doesn't matter whether you have custody or discretion about whether you're sending that annually. So the answer is actually uh, C. So it is C. Okay. So okay, my question then is so, but you do send it more though if you have. Yeah, if there's a material change, then within 120 days. So, but I don't know why you were hung up on the language, but only if. So, oh, okay. But only, okay. So, so I that's think saying that, if it, that's, that's saying if you don't have cut. That's right. Got I, you. I, I, got think you. It, I think you missed that because of the grammar, not really because you didn't know it, but got you know, you. okay. That's but, and by the way, Kaplan's grammar is trying to be as bad as what you're going to encounter on the test. Got you. No, I'm so, sad. You know, you want to be pleasantly surprised, uh, not unpleasantly surprised uh, as it relates to this. Registration of an investment advisor automatically confers registration on. Okay. One. Because we have to register ourselves. I like to say I want to say one only. Excellent. I love it. Another great attack plan, right? You, you took yourself out of there, meaning you don't you can't have two in the answer set, which left you with either B or C. And then you should know that we don't register clerical employees don't get registered. Excellent. Uh, what is the tax penalty for withdrawal of money from an IRA before age 59 and a half? Unfortunately, 10%. Woo <laughs> yeah, you got to, you don't give them any aim and shoot point and click. So when you do, man, you got to perform on Unfortunately, them. Unfortunately, right? 10%. Yeah. In making suitable invest investment recommendations, the least significant element would be the client's education level. Yeah. Uh, you know, who cares what, you know, what they, uh, I've met some very, listen, you're from Texas. Trust me. There are some, uh, people who haven't graduated who even high school maybe not even college who are very sophisticated right yeah uh one of the prohibited practices on the uniform securities act is market manip manipulation which of the following are examples of broker dealers engaging in this practice okay churning automatically is an answer yeah okay so we know that a and d are not answers okay so a wash trade would be buying something and then selling something. So I want to say two and four. Well, be careful. Churning isn't about manipulating the market. Churning is about an individual's account, mm -hmm. right? I, I'm not manipulating the market by churning Chris's account, right? That's between you're just trying to get. You're just trying to get more. Uh, it's a prohibitive practice, certainly, certainly. So then, I mean, if that's the, if we're just gonna. If it's market manipulation, so I, I okay, that's why. So then it would be, wouldn't it be 
because arbitrage is just that's not, price, that's not illegal but that's profiting from price discrepancy yeah that's just at one at one company to another right so then it would be three and four then yeah yeah so churning again i think picking hairs a little bit here at kaplan but churning is still a prohibited practice it's just market not market manipulation okay I got you. All right. Uh, as used in regulations, the term in personal investment advice means. I want to say D. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, because that's like a, a newspaper or like a that's exactly podcast right. or something like that. Absolutely. One of the most significant features of the Uniform Prudent Investors Act is the ability of a trustee to delegate investment decisions to a qualified third party. Delegation is permitted as long as the fiduciary to whom the powers are delegated. Okay, this just means like you're, if you don't know how to do something, you can like send yeah, it to I someone think. else to do it for you. Yeah, yeah, I like it, exactly. Okay. Um... Delegations, no, as long as the powers are delegated, um, considers there a risk reward trade off of each individually. Acts with skill and caution. So it's not C and D. So I, I guess A. Well, because the only reason I'm asking this, so because I, I know you're about to say something before you say anything, I hate these questions because I hate because considers the risk reward. So is this saying of the existing portfolio already? Well, no, you, you started with the right exact thing. And I said, right on. You said, is this about, can I let somebody do something that I don't have expertise in? So then it would be acts with skill and caution. But my yeah. question then, so if answer A then would be of the securities chosen. Would That's that right. Be... So your counter, A would counterdict what you originally said. A means you're doing it yourself. Yeah. Okay. Right. So a key point is third party. It says to a qualified third party. And it's new stuff that you're yeah, asking. So what do you want me to do? Mark you wrong or yeah, here's what you no, said. No, the answer is B. The answer is B. Okay, I'm gonna give you B then. Okay. But remember, you start out, you said exactly the right thing. Yeah. And then you roll, roll, well, roll back. All right. News reports indicate the wheat crop scheduled to be harvested in three months will be much larger than normal. To hedge, a wheat farmer would most likely. They will be larger than normal. Most likely, we can take out B. <laughs> right. take out. Yeah, I like that. Actually, you, you're correct. You can take that out. All right. So he's hedging, though. So he wants to protect yeah, exactly. his investment. I love it. That's exactly correct. So then he would. Okay, he's a wheat farmer, so he's already in the in the business. So he wouldn't take a. He's already has a long. I want to say A. Excellent. He's going to do a substitute sale, right? He's going to do in the futures yeah. market today what he's going to do in the cash market, spot market later on. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, which of the following are discretionary orders? Okay, so you need all the steps. All right. Okay. A customer instructs an agent to sell 300 shares. Boom. When they of ML, of boom, when they boom, okay. Two and four. Two, and let's see, two says buy, there's the action. A hundred shares. A thousand shares, there's the asset, ABC, there's the amount. The three A's are present, two is not a discretionary order. Well, hold on, at a time and price determined by the agent? Time and price doesn't constitute taking discretion. Okay, so... It constitutes taking discretion is making a decision about action, 
asset or amount? You're on the back side of the question. Let's look at the four. Four, agent sell, there's the action. 300 shares, there's the amount. LMN, there's the asset. The three A's are present. In both two and four, the three A's are present. Action, asset, amount. As long as action, asset, amount are present, it's not a discretionary order. I'm allowed to make a decision for you about execution as it relates to time and price. A market not held order is an example of that. Let's look so at I'm on. So I'm on the opposite of it. So these exactly. would be, okay. So a discretionary order is me making the decisions for you. About either action, ass, or amount. So Roman number Got one. You. There's, okay. There's All the right. action by 25. There's the amount, but the asset isn't present. I say, sorry, Chris. I can't decide what stocks to buy for you. And then uh, number three, uh, purchase as many shares as I think is appropriate without discretionary authority. I can't do that. How about Got you? Got you. Got you. Got you. Okay. So one and three, you were on the backside. Now, I, okay. as your tutor, I prefer that you're on the backside of a question like that than you just miss it completely. Okay. So, um, I said two said, and four. Okay. Yeah, you said two and four. So we're going to. Okay. But that's part of the process as well. I think we're still on track. And averse ETFs are suitable primarily for investors. Okay. So you're doing the opposite of the that's ETF. Enough. Okay, so um, uh, 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 man, mm -hmm. very short time horizon. I'll follow up. So it's not D. I like it. I like a process right. of elimination. You're correct. It is not D. Yeah. You would not be bullish on the market because you're going the opposite of the market. Yeah, so can you see? Correct. That's okay. right. So you're div now you're to a 50-50. Okay. So an inverse or leveraged ETFs. You want to leverage. Okay. Ah, ah, I want to say B. There's nothing in this question that this is a leveraged ETF. Well, so in the in the book, it what it said was it says inverse and leveraged ETFs when you want to. Well, they're trading vehicles is what the answer is. It's oh. oh. you know, we don't know anything about the income. There's nothing about an ETF about income. Ah, uh, okay. It's like a bond ETF. So it's so it's so the answer is A? The answer is A. Okay, gotcha. But I like gotcha. I still like I still like you got to a 50-50 though by process of elimination. Okay. Man, all right. So I follow the max maximum amount a taxpayer may contribute to uh Coverdale, educate two thousand, two thousand, right two thousand. Boom, good job. So you're you're doing pretty good on your aim and shoot point and click questions, which is excellent. Which of the following transactions are prohibited? Which of the following transactions are prohibited? All of them? Yes. <laughs> B? Yeah, you're correct. A risk-adverse client living in the United States is holding a high proportion of his assets in cash and cash equivalents in U.S. dollars is exposed to which of the following uh, risks? Which of the following risks? Okay, so cash and cash equivalent have... In Inflation risk. That's right. So, but that choice, you're right. So now you got to go to the answer set and say, what is most like what I just said? Purchasing power risk. Love that. So I love that. So I call that projecting the answer. You projected, Chris, the correct answer, right? But then that answer wasn't there. So now you got to say, okay, well, given the answers they're you know offering me, the What's ones that the closest, option? yeah, excellent. Uh, a U.S. dollar-denominated bond issued by a non-American company sold outside of the United States and the issuer's country, but for which the principal and interest is paid in U.S. dollars is best described as. Just to pause, I, I had none of these questions on my actual test, which is hilarious. Yeah, well, that's but, true. You know, it's just the draw. Yeah, which is hilarious. This, yeah, this but used to I, I, I want to say it's a Yankee bond. Uh, well, Yankee would be Latin America. Oh, okay. So, 
Yeah, so this is called a euro dollar bond. Okay, euro bond. Okay. Yeah, I don't think you're going to see it. Okay. It used to be there, but you know they go out of style. You know, every now and again. Uh, which of the following has the least exposure to inflation risk? Okay. So fixed would be so C and A uh, least exposure to inflation risk. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the firm stock is a fixed, fixed. Uh, common stock? Yeah, I'm surprised it took you that long to get to that. That's a name and shoot point and click question should have been in. Okay. Remember, this is going to be, there's going to be an answer set like this. It's common stock, right? And then uh, tips. Gotcha. Okay. When making recommendations to an advisory client, which of the following carries the most weight? The most weight. Three, one and three. Excellent. Excellent. At 60, can we take a break? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So, uh, as a result of an inheritance, Danielle now owns a large position XYZ stock. She's concerned the stock may decline in the upcoming months while she's deciding what to do with the investment. What type of strategy could she employ to protect the stock from substantial downside risk? So it'd be a put. So yeah, excellent. Uh, I want to say B. Yeah, I, I got to tell you, you're pretty strong, particularly on some of these higher end investment questions. That is a higher end investment question. You got it correct. Uh, good job. Hey man, we spent ninety minutes on it. Yeah. I better be good at yeah. it now. Yeah, <laughs> that's excellent. Which of the following statements regarding more modern portfolio theory is not not correct? Okay, so I, I believe the Optimum portfolio lies on the Efficient Frontier. Not oh, God, you are good. Okay. When you're good, Chris, you are good. All right. Yeah, I mean, let's do it. That's exactly correct. That's exactly correct. All now, right. So, based C. on what you just said, then that means you're picking what choice? C. That was, I mean, you just, you verbatim gave the definition of that. Yeah, oh, man, that was excellent. Some of these, you know, I wish it was weighted because uh, I would be giving you bonus points on some of these answers where you're just really spot on. There's another one. A registered investment company's portfolio consists of equity securities and the portfolio does not change in the response to market conditions is probably... D? Uh, D is in dog. A registered investment company portfolio consists yep, of equity securities. Right. Yeah, so it yep, doesn't change. Right. Yeah, it doesn't right. change. You are correct. Because an ETN is a note. That's not. That, I love it. Very testable yeah. as well. Right on. If your thirty-nine-year-old customer is the sole owner of a business, uh, earns two hundred and sixty, and makes the maximum contribution to a Keo plan, how much money? Can they contribute in 2022? In 2022. You can contribute the max. Um, oh man. For an IRA, what is the max? 
56. Uh, it's actually 6,000, right? The maximum contribution is the lesser of 100% uh, percent of your earned income or 6,000. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't anybody ever tell me they've seen that as a, as a question, but you know, oh well. Okay. The right. Investment Company Act of 1940 requires a mutual fund to do which of the following? Requires a mutual fund to do which of the following? Four. Okay, four is one. All right, so that means that knocks out A and B. So it's either one or two. I, I don't remember this one, so I'm gonna go one and four. Four. Uh, you should know it's, I think, again, it's grammar, but it's not acquire more than five, it's three, not five. Oh, okay. so I would give it to you about a grammar wise because five would be a violation. Uh, okay. The answer is actually two and three. We want to start our own mutual fund. We need a hundred grand. Yeah, okay. and it's semi annually. So two and three. Um, okay. uh, I'm, I don't know. I think I'm, uh, what'd you say? You said two and four? I said two and four. Yeah, that's that. I think that's on Kaplan actually on the grammar. Okay, that's I mean, fine. you can make an argument that four is true, right? Which of the you know, yeah, okay. And it said right. you said you can't do that, four you can't do that, but I think you know, Chuck being Chuck just went into three instead of the five. Uh, what is the term given to that item typically found at the bottom of a corporation's balance sheet that drives such things as significant accounting policies, commitments made by the company? and potential liabilities and potential uh, losses. And so I'm just on the bottom of a corporation about the chain that describes such an existence of accounting policy. Footnotes? Yeah, excellent. Uh, which of the following is not included in fundamental analysis, fundamental analysis of a company? A. Right on, aim and shoot point and click, excellent. A uh, stock has been at a downtrend for several days. When a price decreases near 30, many investors enter orders to buy the stock and the price uh, increases to 31. This is most likely an example of. Okay, so this people went down. Near 30. So 30 is the support level. Love it. I love it. So many investors enter order to buy the stock as the price increases to 31. This most likely is an example of a, a support level. Excellent. Excellent. I was, I, as your tutor, I was cheering for you because I was open. This. I hope this is another one where he has the answer and then talks. Them. No, no. So, I, I mean, I was, because it, it's Excellent. going down and you realize, okay, yeah. so 30, so you know it's going to go back up. Perfect. So, Perfect. 60. If you knew a given stock had a 40% chance oh, uh, right. yeah. here we go. <laughs> or a 40% chance of earning 20 and a 20% chance of earning 10, the stock would have. Right. So this is one of the, let's see, you got to multiply them and add them together. <laughs> yeah, you're correct. <laughs> Well, I mean, all the answers are 10, so I don't need to do that then. <laughs> uh, well, they're all 10, so yeah, so you're going to have to, to use this <laughs> restore to 10, expected rate of return of 10, annualized return of 10, real rate of return. I think you can get the answer here by process of elimination based on what you just told me before you were reaching. Yeah, that. so it's not real rate of return. That's right. It's not expected rate of return. So Total return. Okay, hold on. Wait, stop. Let's pause real quick. Let's go through my let's go through my things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Equivalent to it. Okay, so annualized return. No. Expected. I actually do want to say B. Excellent. Excellent. I love it. I okay. love it. 
You made no, because I had to go on my data. I, I don't know it. if, if, if you can walk now, You're not going to have to do that math anyways. Eel, as you tax see. equivalent yield. I was like, no, I love it. I love no, it. You no, didn't no, have to no. do the math, Chris. So you were right. I thought okay. you were right to look at this and say, is there a hack available before I start doing all the math? On the real exam, you want to have to do that math. Again, it's mainly the understanding math. Now, I know you want to take a break and we're going to do so. Let's get to 65 because that's a halfway uh, through. The okay, break. that's cool. Do five more. We'll take a 10-minute break and we'll finish up. A okay. client owns 300 shares of Bach Common Stock in a margin account. The stock was originally purchased at a price of 40 and the Reg T call was met. If the stock is now selling for 50, disregarding interest charges, the client's equity is now. Okay, so Reg T is 50%. Right on. All right, so top of the original person. So you have 300 shares times 40. Is okay. All right. So then you it went up to fifty. And you kept it at fifty percent. So So the original were at six thousand. That you're correct. The original was six. Okay, so it went up to fifteen thousand. There's no share here. Six, three thousand. That was more. Yeah. So nine thousand. Oh my God, that was excellent. That was excellent. I like what you did. You did what initial setup, right? And you said six, then you did a mark and said that's three more. Excellent. If an investment advisor purchases a research report from an advisory firm of a non-affiliate broker dealer, the advisor must distribute this report, may distribute this report to clients. Uh, provided a fee is paid to the broker dealer for each copy. No, C. C. Oh, C, you're saying C. You have to let the uh, customer know. Well, the report. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You got to let them know that it was prepared by a third party. Yep, you are correct. Uh, when attempting to construct the optimal portfolio, the investor uh, advisor is looking to obtain uh, A, the maximum return for the least risk. Yeah, Nirvana, we can find that, right? Cool. Uh, one of your firm's portfolio managers is discussing risk that can be re reduced during portfolio construction process. Which of the following options might she be referring to? Might she be referring to? A. On systematic risk, you are correct. Well, I got to tell you, on some of this investment stuff, you are spot on. An investor following the buy and hold model of investing would most likely be Okay, so this is what we're talking about. You're just gonna buy an index. So, so buying stock as a long-term investment to reach a specific goal. Buying a stock during the no, it's not buy and hold. Look into shelter, tax from taxation. I want to say B, Dean. Buying a stock, and you are once again correct on the investment stuff. You are solid, my friend. All right, so we're gonna take a, a ten-minute break. Uh, Alexa, set timer, set timer of 10 minutes. 10 minutes, starting now. Under the Uniform Securities Act, a person who is in the business of providing advice on trading's futures contracts, in addition to advising clients issued or guaranteed by the U.S. government, is... Oh, well. <laughs> okay, this is a lot. All right, under the yeah. USA... So hold on, we had a question about this earlier. Okay, all right, so. Oh, but it doesn't tell me if they have a place of business or not. So I just can't assume. All right, so it's, it's not about, it's about the security. They didn't tell you anything. We didn't tell you about. Yes, yeah, so it's asking me about the security. So, okay, so. 
guaranteed by the U.S. government, and advice on trading futures contracts. You know what? I just want to I want to go ahead and say that they have to be um, they're required to be registered. Advising clients. Required to be an investment advisor in the state? Um, Incorrect. Okay. They're not required to be registered because remember, they're trading that you were on the right track. It's not about an individual, it's about the firm. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> Advice is limited to government securities, you'd be federally covered, right? Yeah. Okay. So, All right. Uh, that, by the way, the grammar on that was bad, but that's uh, a miss. Okay. Uh, a client has 100 shares of GHA stock. When the stock undergoes a split, after the split, the client has. <clears throat> uh, the answer is A. Excellent. I can tell you, you rock and roll on the investment category, rock and roll. It's got to go back and tighten back up over the. Well, that's IR. okay. I mean, there's no, well, I'm not saying that's bad. It's just that you're uh, more more squared away, if you will, on the, some of the investment stuff, and some of it's the higher end investment stuff, which is uh, kind of nice. And I wish it was more points for getting the higher end questions right. So, you're turning a lot of those questions into aim and, uh, aim and shoot point and click questions, which is excellent. An investment advisor new to the business is engaged by an elderly client who on the grounds of privacy refuses to disclose his annual income or net worth. The client merely asks the advisor to establish and manage a $50,000 portfolio. If the client brings a cashier's check for $50,000 to the initial meeting, which choice below reflects the best action on part of the investment advisor? Okay, so questions like this are more so kind of what would I do? Yeah, I'm with you. I, yeah, I call these Chris judgment questions. I miss them all the time myself. What would uh, I do, don't... or what, or what is the book wants you to well, do? Well, I would say it this way, Chris. Some of us call the compliance department the sales prevention department. Yeah, they think the easiest way for us to stay out of trouble is not to sell anything. Yeah, so no, the answer is the answer is C. <laughs> there you go. But I'm with you. I'm with you. You know, so, hey, I always hey. miss the asset allocation questions about how much equity should the guy have because I say 100%. I'm joking, but yeah, I, you know, oh man, okay, all right. Uh, if near term liquidity is the only objective for the customer, which of the following pairs of investments represents the most least liquid? Oh, kind of a weird kind of a question. Oh, okay. It's saying what is most liquid and yeah, least yeah, liquid? Least. Yeah, that's exactly. They want you to come up okay, with Okay, so it. then that. B and C would be my options then because yeah, DPPs are not liquid. You're, you're nailed it. You got a 50-50. Okay. So I want to say a common stock would be more liquid than a annuity. You nailed it. That was perfect. Uh, bond prices are quoted as a percentage of? Par value. Boom. Under the North American Securities Administrator Association's model rule on unethical business practices of investment advisors, investment advisor reps, and federally covered advisors, which of the following must be included in the investment advisory contract? Which of the following must be included in the investment advisory contract? It's not three. That's correct. Okay, so if, if three is not an answer, just by the based on how this reads, so so three is not in there. So the answer is D. Excellent, excellent. You're 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 becoming a good test taker, my friend. Oh, now, one okay. thing I point out, you're absolutely correct. 
is we might want to read one and two just before we move on because maybe that's yeah just to, maybe just to make sure i i block well, and plus maybe we can use it later on maybe they gave us some free information so formula used yep the master scarcity yeah so boom uh which of the following statements are true about an individual roth ira and a roth 401k a plan Okay. Did you answer? I'm sorry. No, I haven't yet. Okay, no worries. I feel like this is going to be another one where I'm on the other side of it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so just put a T or an F next to them. So go read each one and say T or F. And by the way, if you can't do all the T's or F's, that's fine. So contributions are made with after-tax dollars. True or false? Okay. Is that true or false? The contributions to a Roth are made with after-tax dollars. Yes, that's true. Okay, so we need Roman numeral one. Uh, one must have an adjusted gross income below a certain level in that's order true. to either Roth, either Roth. Well, now the the four hundred one k is through your employer. Oh, so your employer because yeah. it gives you a Roth and a four hundred one k. That's right. So two is yeah. not true. Okay, so if all the conditions are met, withdrawals from a Roth are tax free. If you're fifty nine, if you're yeah. over fifty nine, yeah. So I mean, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So one and three, right? So. Mm -hmm. Boom. Um, I think that should be legislative risk. Those things are so sweet. Yeah. So, I, so with, with the RMDs at age 72, um, is that saying that, well, because, I mean, there are RMDs. For the 71. 401k there is, but not the traditional Roth. Yeah. Okay. So that's how that this kind of cloud is kind of a difficult one. Uh, low risk tolerance uh, and high liquidity needs are typical characteristics of which type of an institutional investor? Which type of an institutional investor? Low risk tolerance and high liquidity needs. Low. <laughs> yes. That is great. Um, well, let's think about our current economic situation. Uh, you know, uh, a couple of these guys are uh, kind of. Uh, by their fellows are considered to be ding dongs for not understanding that in their business they should have low risk tolerance. Uh, I want to, banks. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Banks. <laughs> yeah, right. So banks. Uh, well, there you go. You're so, right. They need can, to be able can to we, meet their. We, now, by the way, I, I'm sure the guys who are the idiots at Silicon Valley Bank are saying, "Well, we did have low risk tolerance. We we bought treasuries, and we said, well, yeah, but didn't you know about duration and interest rate risk? That's you know one of the reasons.' Yeah." So the, the only thing, yeah, I'm sorry. The only thing with the only thing with that one, um, with the others, I mean, B, C, and D are more long term, right? Yeah, that's what I was gonna. Okay. I mean, I have some current retirees, I have future retirees, but you know, pension plans are typically longer term investors. Okay. Trust accounts are typically longer term, and foundations are typically. Longer -term. And they have a little bit higher risk and a little bit yeah, less. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool, cool. Or in the trust and the, the you're not gonna have every knocking on your door or hitting their their laptop and withdrawing your millions of dollars. Which of the following statements concerning market efficiency is not correct, is not? B. B, investors who accept usually adopt, oh, you're right on, uh, mm -hmm. not correct. I think you're absolutely correct. I didn't even get a chance to read the other ones. No, so it's not that I had this before. I, I, I was doing efficient market last night uh -huh. and uh -huh. Anytime, I think uh, either Dean or someone else uh, uh, had watched a video on YouTube or something. Not you, I'm sorry, Brian or I love someone Brian, else. Yeah. I can't My brother remember. from another mother, yeah. Yeah, uh, he was like, do not put active with, <laughs> I was like, all right. So he, he's burned it into my brain. I, I like it, I like it. Like I say, you continue to be very, very solid on the investment component. Uh, under the Securities Exchange Act of 34, which body regulates the extension of credit for non-exempt securities? D? Uh, yeah, right on. 
In general, the favored, uh, favored way of measuring performance of a money manager is by B. Yeah, and then you should know those benchmarks as well. Excellent. Uh, research analyst studying the performance of ABC industry company compares that with the analyst reviewing other companies and other industries as known as Okay, hold on. So, a research analyst studying the performance of ABC Industries compares that with reports from other analysts reviewing other companies and other industries. This is known as so it's not top down or bottom down because that's yeah. That's I think this one's kind of interesting. So, I mean, would, wouldn't it just be fundamental analysts? Uh, well, analysis? I don't like the questions because I, I'm kind of uh, uh, fumbling around with this. Uh, I think we might miss this. I'm not sure how we're supposed to. It is certainly part of fundamental analysis. Uh, let's see, starting the performance of ABC. So I'm comparing company A to company B. So when I start with the company, I think it's gonna, I think we're gonna miss this and I think it's gonna be bottom up. But, but hold on, but wouldn't, so fine, whatever, but bottom up though, I get it, you're starting with the company, but wouldn't that be, cause it's not saying, it's saying, Compares with what was other. Yeah, I, I think it's a companies. poor question. I think it's a poor question personally. So okay, I'm right. Right. I think it's poor. I just you know it, it it is what it is, right? Okay, but bottom up analysis is a part of fundamental. Yeah, yeah, analysis. absolutely. Okay, all the long statements regarding future contracts are correct, except okay. So future contracts are standardized contracts. Okay, so just keep that in my mind. All right. D. B. Okay, so completing a futures contract requires the delivery of the commodity. Thought that was a board. So I want to go with C. You are correct. You are correct. Uh, yield curve analysis plays an important role as benchmarking and forecasting tool for the future direction of interest rates. In most cases, this analysis involves examining Okay, so this is this is like the, the X. So it's it's maturities on one side and the quality on the other side. Okay, so bonds of similar quality, varying maturities, bonds of varying quality, similar maturities. Bonds of varying quality with a number of maturities. No, similar issue of varying maturities. No, Bill Prime plays an important role as benchmarking forecasting tool. Future direction of interest rates. Oh, so it's um, you're measuring like a corporate bond against uh, 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 a bill, a treasury bill. So that would be well, um, well, you're, what you're describing to me is not the yield curve, you're describing to me the credit spread. Oh, gotcha. This okay. is about the yield curve. Okay, um, then I'm going to say. Um, shoot, thanks. If I was going in the wrong direction, I'm bonds of similar quality over varying maturity, bonds of varying quality. So, I want to say A. Uh, it's treasuries that we use for the yield curve. You, you missed it, okay? It, right? A normal yield curve is when short term treasuries have lower rates than long term maturity, long -term. converted was when. Short-term treasuries have higher yields than long-term treasuries. Inverts. Okay. The answer is B. I thought you were going to get that because, again, you set it up correctly in your mind when you were talking. I love it because you're talking, so I can hear what's you know what's going on in your brain housing group. And okay. You were, initially, you were on the right track about this idea of oh, this goes that way and this goes that way. Uh, okay. Maybe you should have gone to your white first. With a, <laughs> Go to the whiteboard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh man! Which of the okay. following entities would issue uh, issue a Schedule K one? Uh, 
Right, so K1 is scheduled. That's a, I know an LLC does that. Um, well, I like that. I like that logic. So if you said it, an LLC does that, then what in this answer set is most like an LLC in terms of how it's taxed? Um, a limited partnership. Yeah, yeah, that's going to be your distributions, right? Your either your passive no. income or your passive losses. Uh, included in the Uniform Securities Act of a definition of a broker dealer would be. A. Right on. Good job. Uh, if the yield curve is positive, sloping upward, this means the long term interest rates are. All right. So we actually talked about this the other day. So, yeah, and, and you just almost had this, you almost walked me through this just a minute ago. Yeah. So I am going to say. It means long-term interest rates. Oh man, see now I'm now I'm <laughs> flubbing. Now I'm flubbing myself up. Pause. Let me, let me no, stop no, real quick. Um, let me pause real quick. So you you were drawing a picture to me verbally. So when the previous question that was correct that on one side of this maturities, and then you have quality. Okay. Not quality, so, not quality. It's the difference in the, the yields. The uh, they, the yield, because that's correct, correct. Yeah, so difference in the yields. All right, so as interest rates go up, wouldn't the long-term interest, I'm sorry, as the yield curve becomes more positive, wouldn't long-term interest rates, um, wouldn't they be higher than short-term yes. rates? Excellent, yeah. excellent, excellent. Because, uh, because an inverted, the short-term, yep. That's and that's just because the feds are pumping money into there you go man i'm oil. telling you i'm telling you but uh, like i say that was not an easy one so you, you're getting some of these higher end ones okay uh, correct so you know like i say you only get one point for all of them but you know uh you're doing pretty good on some of these higher level judgment investment questions so uh i think you gotta put you in pretty good stead an investor believes that he can study the history of securities trades and securities markets in order to identifying buying opportunities. Furthermore, he prepares and studies charts on the past prices of securities he's most interested in purchasing in his portfolio. He uses these charts to try to predict the future activity of a particular stock. What type of strategy is the investor using to make investment decisions? Technical an analysis. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a layup, that is a layup. Your client is in a 28% federal tax bracket owns U.S. government bonds with a coupon yield of six. In order to receive the same income after taxes, she would not need to buy municipal bonds with a coupon of. Hundred minus twenty eight is seventy two times six percent. Four point three two. Excellent, my friend. Excellent. Boom. By the way, you could have got there with 50-50 by knowing it's got to be something under the under the six. Yeah, it's got to be something lower than that. I just I want to excellent, do that. excellent. A manager of venture capital fund would be most interested in investing in most interested in investing in. Um, wouldn't it be D? Uh, D, a company interested in going private? No, but th th that would be a private equity fund venture. Which kind of the manager of chain? Yeah, venture capital yes. goes the other way. Okay, so a young, uh, yeah, wait, you would, it was a, young, a, a young, so a young promising yeah. company. Yeah, okay. they're early investors, seed investors. Okay. You haven't missed one in a while, so that's okay. State okay. registered investment advisor offers wrap fees to certain clients. Which of the funk statements about the wrap fee arrangements is not true? Not true.
A. Wait, no, no, no. Yeah, A. Non-material changes rat fees. That is incorrect. Oh, wow. Okay. Remember it said, which is folly is not true. Oh, no, okay. Non-material right. changes must be disclosed within 90 days of fiscal. That year is year. true. Okay. So then it would be. Uh, oh, man. D then? Yes, that's right. That's not true. There's not an annual disclosure. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's just slow down. That's yeah. Well, that's okay. You're doing pretty good. Okay. Dollar right. cost averaging is certainly testable. Uh, an advantage of dollar cost averaging is that it results in the average cost per share that is less than the average stock price, assuming which of the following. Assuming which of the following. I like this question. All right. So three has to be in the answer choice. That's a, you're absolutely correct. Okay, so that means that knocks out D right on and A. So now we're looking at either one or four. Okay, a set dollar amount of investments is maintained. I don't like that. The price of the underlying shares fluctuates. Okay, one and three. Perfect. Perfect. A fundamental analyst would be interested in the funds available to use for use in the business. Doing which of the following would have the greatest impact on future cash flow? Which of the following would have the greatest impact on future cash flow? Retained earnings? Well, retained earnings have nothing to do with cash coming in or out. Right. So, okay. Then it would, ooh, we're looking we're, for we're, something that has cash. Cash flow is the money coming into the business. Retiring, retiring the bond. Yeah. Right. Well, you pay off the okay. bonds. Now you don't pay yeah. the interest. Right. Okay. So you'd have more money falling to your bottom line if you didn't have the mortgage. Right. Okay. Uh, an investor's required rate of return is 6%. Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> got to know those. Got to know those. Man. Uh, excellent, know excellent, those. man. I, I got to tell you, like I say, uh, you you have some layups. I, 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 the thing I would say, I'm, I'm pretty pleased is your tutor your performance, particularly on the investment side. Um, every once in a while, though, I, I when you're getting these higher end aim and shoot point and click, which are not typically aim and shoot point and click, but you're certainly getting them that way, which is fine. Uh, I then sometimes wonder why we didn't get like common stock as name and shoot on inflation. So hopefully, <laughs> hopefully we'll get some more of those. Hopefully we'll get some more. Hopefully we get more of those. <laughs> yeah. and, it, and it's not because I don't know the answers. No, I, know, I know, I know, no. I like I say, you got you got plenty of base, plenty of base knowledge at this point. A form of business organization that offers flow through of income and loss while providing investors with limited liability is an LLC. And an escort. You are absolutely correct. And that is very testable. Uh, Whippet Bus Lines is uh, serving most of the country and has been informed by the Surface Transportation Board of the United States that all its buses must be retrofitted with expensive safety equipment. The effect of this will be a significant drop in their net income. Uh, to an investor in Whippet Bus Lines, this would be an example of regulatory risk. Right on, right on. Uh, under the Investment Advisors Act of 1940, as amended by the marketing rule for investment advisors, advertising done by investment advisors prohibit. Two and three. Reference to only specific. Well, you can make references to that, but you are correct. It's two and three, right? Yeah. And it says prohibit. So yeah, because it says only reference. Specific. Only. Yeah, you got yeah. it right. Excellent. Excellent. On October 15, 2008, the Dow Jones Industrial Average lost 733 points, the single uh, largest point drop in its history. After the markets closed on Tuesday, October 14th, ABC Manufacturing released its third quarter operating results with earnings that surpassed all estimates. However, by the close of the market, the price was down 15 points. This is an example of... Okay, hold on. This, this... So this is something out of their control. That's right. 
So it is a systematic risk. Right on. I think it's when bad things happen to good stocks like uh, ABC. Which, wouldn't it, wouldn't it the, the better term be market risk? Yeah, the same, there's, it's synonymous on the test. They wouldn't give you both okay. the same answers. Okay, all right. Your married customers are both 42 years old. They have two children ages 14 and 12. Mm-hmm. They've spent the past 10 years accumulating money to provide for their children's education. The oldest child will enter college in four years. The customers are very cautious investors. Mm-hmm. If they need a safe investment that provides regular income mm-hmm. to help them meet tuition payments, okay. which of the following mutual funds would be most suitable for these customers? Okay, so they're very cautious. So you wouldn't do anything crazy. So you're not going to do D. Right on. Okay. But they want income. Right on. Okay. So you are going to do something like a bond, maybe. Yeah. So, by the way, you should have been able to, I like what you did. You knocked out D. And now you should be able to knock out A because of the income. Yeah, they want income. So A's out, been knocked out, D's knocked out. No, I mean, a balanced one will give you balance between stocks, but I mean, they their primary focus is income. So I want to say B. I like it. I probably would have missed this. You got it right, but me too. I think they need stock. I think you always need stock. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I can understand that because the yeah, stock is going to give right. you possibly dividends. Yeah, or... yeah, yeah you, got it. you got it right. Uh, the sale of a life insurance policy in the secondary market by a terminally <laughs> ill individual is known as? Something that I've never thought would be possible, but a biatical settlement. <laughs> what's, what's your answer? huh what's your answer a you are correct you are correct something about that just seems i know it turns people off hey I, look i see when right. i see them advertise they got to have a guy who like all the seniors trust like we're not trying to knock you off you know? yeah hey look <laughs> okay <laughs> you're a c an investor uh, this regarding any potential redemption or contingent for sales charge the investor tendering shares of an opening company for redemption will receive. Okay, you're going to receive disregarding uh, investor tendering shares of an open ended. Oh, so it's always at uh, it's always at NAV. Yeah. So it's at the next computed NAV. You got it. Ford pricing, very testable, excellent. Oh my God! Which of the following regarding registrations? Right. investment advisors and their representatives is true all right let's slow this down okay all right okay so d is not correct all right or that you knocked out d and you're correct to knock out d now you can't do this on their screen because they'd get mad at you on the test but we can do it on our screen. So let's not go back on D. You just knocked it out. So it's out of there. And it via, registered with the administrator, employees, and investment advisor who left. Okay. Registered with the employees, and investment advisor who left the employment from six months ago, but must notify. Okay. So that is true. But I think everybody has to do that, though. So, yes. Like, Federal cover. No, B is not correct because you still might have to register yeah. with the state. Yeah. You're the, you're correct, so that's out. Oh, okay. So I see why they did this. Okay, investment advisor representative terminated his employment. With ABC Advisors, six months later, was employed as an advisory representative by Canada. Each firm is required to notify the admin of, of each event. Okay, so registered employees and everyone who left him six months ago, ABC. So this is just saying who has to notify. Yeah, that's exactly. And right. I think, and I think everybody has to notify. So I'm going to say A. Uh, you missed it. It's C. So. It, it's not, well, it's not everybody on when it's a state covered. When it's a state covered, right? When it's a state covered, it's going to be uh, are only the state guys are required to notify the administrator because remember, federal guys don't do any inactor with the state. Got you. Okay. All right. So that's, uh, you missed that one. That's okay. Okay. Got to a 50 50. You had a couple where you had a 50 50 and you still missed it, but that's okay. I mean, I like your, your skills as a test taker. 
uh, you know, in terms of what you're doing. So, you know, how you're attacking questions. All the following statements are features of hedge funds except. Me? Yeah, no way. I mean, you know, <laughs> I wish <laughs> we'd all be rich. <laughs> there you go, right? Yeah, that's as uh, you know, you, if you can't rub a couple nickels together, you ain't gonna get in, right? A uh, large, large amount of nickels. On uh, the Uniform Securities Act, the record keeping requirements established by the administrator for out of state investment advisors wishing to register in his state are subject to the limitations of. This is a um, some tell me this is a point and click, but I'm going to pause real quick. Under the USA, the record keeping requirements established by the administrator for an out of state investment advisor wishing to register in his state are subject to the limitations of. Okay, so two things are ringing in my head SEC is God, administrators are not. But that has nothing to do with so that you can take away C because that that's broker dealers in the secondary market. That's correct. A requirement set by the administrator of the advisor's home state. I think. I mean, because I mean that's the case for when you have to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I want B. Yeah, B. Yeah, that should you're right. That should have been aim and shoot point and click, right? The, it's always the home state if you're a state advisor. Yeah, right. Home state. So, you got it. Which of the following statements is correct? Which of the following statements is correct? Oh, okay. I was about to say, why is it on one or the other? Okay. I, I didn't get all the way down to answer choice D. Okay. Uh, boy, both state registered and federal covered investment advisors who have custody of clients are required to provide an audited balance sheet to their clients. That's your I, answer? I believe that's my answer. It's incorrect. It's only the state. Federal guys don't have to do shit. Excuse my language. Really? Yeah. It's the state guys that have to do it. The answer is A. Wow. Okay. And the prepayment is more than 500 right yeah no it's okay so yeah you missed that one man that's all right so, yeah like i say okay so I, i'm gonna so you what is that unit uh, uh let's see uh well we'll tell us when we get it that would be the um let's regulations check. that's four yeah okay all right uh which of the following are regulated under the securities act of 34 two and three yeah, excellent. I, you know, you just said this answer a minute, moment ago when you were going through the game. Yeah. Uh, an agent terminates his association with a broker dealer A and begins work for broker dealer B. Under the Uniform Securities Act, which of the following must take place? Which of the following must take place? Okay, so broker dealer A must notify. Wait, we just had this. Hold on. Just we'll here, but last time we had it, it was an investment advisor representative, an investment advisory firm. Okay, this time it is a broker dealer. A broker dealer, everybody has to notify. So, broker dealer A, broker dealer B, and then the agent. Um, the supervisor has nothing to do with it. So, one, perfect. two, and one, perfect. two, and three. Perfect. I love it. Now, remember, you got to be very careful. What you know, when they're asking about broker dealers or investment advisors. Yeah. Okay. Which of the following is not a leading economic indicator? Which of the following is not a leading economic indicator? Okay. So I want to say, okay. all right. So um, I have Brian in my head right now. See so how <laughs> 
leading. I know stock prices is a leading. Absolutely. Stock prices certainly are. Okay. So then what duration of unemployment would be? Like that's how long unemployment is going. Yep, that's right. So I want to say B. Correct. Excellent, man. You are, you know, this yeah. thing doesn't work out. You can get a job as a portfolio manager. No, nah, nah. I want to be able to, I want to be the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be the boss. Hey, I'm with you. You are on the right side of the business to be on. <laughs> <laughs> Under the Investment Act of 1940, the exclusion of providing investment advice that is solely incidental to the practice of a profession is Late. not available late yeah so that's so, exactly right one of these things is not late so uh, real estate agents right on yeah a client asks her investment advisor rep what footnotes to financial statements are for the best reply would be the footnotes a uh, yep, that's exactly right. Uh, under NASA's model rule dealing with unethical business practices of investment advisor, investment advisor reps, and fairly covered advisors, an investment advisor would have to disclose when that firm is acting in a principal capacity when... Mm, okay, so... You need to tell somebody when you're buying out of your bucket, man. Okay. Um, engaging in an agency cross transaction. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, purchasing shares from advisory clients are originally acquired as a result of the advisor's previous buy recommendations. That's not something wrong with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, engaging in an agency cross transaction. That sounds like you're on both sides of the trade. Yeah, but you're on both sides as an agent, and the specifics he says principal. Principal, yeah. Oh, and a okay, agency. Okay, gotcha. Trade is B, B is out. B is out because it's a specifically asking about a principal. Trade. Principal capacity. So you're so, talking about the bucket, right? There's got to be a bucket that involves. I, I want to say you got to disclose it if your officer or partner of the firm did it. Well, it's actually uh, A. The trade really? is. Yeah, it's A, right? Because okay. they're not on the right track. It's coming out of inventory. So the answer there is A. Okay, all right. A uh, partner of the firm would come through the firm. We'd probably make that disclosure, but it's, you know, that's not what they're looking for. Okay. One of your client centers right. is a sell stop at 60, limit at 59. Subsequent to the entry order, trades occur at 61, 61, 10, 60, 58, 95, 59, 60. The client's order was most likely filled at. Okay, so... This is so stops are if then so yeah so that's you're on the right track so we're looking first so what are we looking if it for? hit if it hits 60 okay so let's just go through so out so if out. it hits 60 so it hits so 60. It hit 60 hold on so let's do that boom let's so now it hits 60 so your point if this okay so 60 is that's so, our that activates it into now a limit order. So remember, he's a seller, so he wants 59. Or better. Or so that means this is going to be out. So 58.95 is out. Yeah. So he's going to activate it at 59. Yep. B is the correct answer, indeed. Now, if he was a if he was a buy stop order, fit 60 limit 59, That's right. the answer would be 58.95. That's right. It would be on the gotcha. other side. It would be gotcha. on the other side. Okay, cool, cool. If then. Then, yeah, if it trades at or through 60, then I want 59 or more. Yeah. Your point. If it trades at or through 60, then I want 59 or less. That would be the buy stop version. 
A uh, customer's chief concern is to shelter as much of your portfolio earnings from tax as possible. Which of the following would be the most suitable uh, for that? Anything that has to do with municipals. Right on. I mean, yeah, that's what they do. Rich people buy municipals, right? Uh, for which of the following is there no active secondary market? For which of the following is there no active secondary market? Board contracts? Yeah, excellent. I thought you wouldn't get that right because you actually said that earlier. So uh, you're, you know, you're rocking, you're rolling on some of the more sophisticated stuff. So that's great. Uh, in order to compute an investor's after-tax return on a corporate bond, all the following are necessary except. Appreciation. Yeah. Uh, well, wait a minute. In order to compute a corporate bond, all the following are necessary except your after tax uh, okay hold yeah, on I, kind of, I don't know why we have appreciation in here uh, well, i definitely know b and c i'm gonna need right yeah inflation or appreciation huh. inflation or appreciation hold yeah. on so which one are we now i'm not even sure what they mean by appreciation um i don't know if i get this right or not i'm gonna go for it what are you saying you're saying appreciate so, yeah so i guess appreciation would be i, I don't know is the bomb selling at a premium maybe? I don't know. Um, I think I, I, it depends on what we're doing here. I don't see anything about inflation adjusted return or effective return. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm thinking that it's probably gonna be the inflation rate. Here's my thought, we, we, you know, we'll, we'll score it up on 110. I think we might be asked about after tax return as total return. Yeah. In which case appreciation would count. Okay. So I, I would have guessed inflation here just cause it's the odd man out. Okay. But I right. do think that's, a, that's you know, 50-50, you know, right? Okay. In the field of securities analysis, there are many tools available. Which of the following would most likely be used by an analyst to approximate a reasonable price for a common stock? A reasonable price for a common stock. B. The dividend discount model, you say, and you are correct. Uh, Herman Industries is operating in a sector where the average price to, rate, er, price to earnings ratio is eight. So we take the price, we divide by our earnings, we get eight. If Herman's earnings per share expected to be 30 cents per quarter, the implied value of Herman's share is closest to, uh, okay. You know, PE is testable. Isn't it 9.6? Nine point, nine uh, well, I think what I would have done is said, okay, if I take nine, and I divide by 30, would I get that answer? Is it, how, did, how did you do it? Did you just uh, shop your answer set? No, I just did the math. I just did, if it's you 30 per the math. Per, yeah, if it's 0. 0.30 per 40. You're, you're actually correct. I would, by, uh, the, the reason you're ahead of me is I had to, I have to stop for a minute and say, okay, so if I get, I'm going to get eight, and that means I'm dividing the price by 30 cents, and that's mm -hmm. the missing thing. I would have done process of elimination, so you're way ahead of me. So okay. You got it right. An investor manager is looking for 10, at 10 possible stocks to include a client's portfolio. In order to create the most efficient portfolio, the manager must. Okay, an investment manager is looking at 10 possible stocks to include in order to create the most efficient portfolio. B. You said B as in boy? No, D as in dog. Oh, okay, I was going to say, how could you miss it? You nailed it last time. I D as in dog. D as in dog. Yeah. There you go. Good job. Uh, what's the following statements regarding international investing is true? D? That's right on. Uh, what'd you say? D is in dog. Um, portfolios to different. No, that's not what they're looking for. Uh, right. The addition of foreign securities may result in increased portfolio risk. True. 
due to different movements of foreign markets at correlation. Yeah, I, I think that's uh, not as good as C. Information is not as readily available in foreign investments because, you know, who knows they have an SEC. Uh, okay. I don't think the D is wrong, Chris. It's just I think C is more a better answer. Okay. Because that okay. is that, that is the answer to why we would put a foreign security into your portfolio is for that different correlation. So I think that's a good miss. Uh, I think that's okay. good. Uh, overnight loans between banks are made at? The federal funds rate. Oh man, when you're when you know it, man, you know it. Uh, consent of the client before completion of the trade made between a firm and a client must be made when. Oh, okay. Hold on. So this is all right. So consent of the client before completion of a trade between the firm and a client must be made. It's when you're the opposite, when the firm is the opposite of the trade. Yeah. So D. Not D. It's D. We have to disclose it, but that's not what this says. It's not asking about disclosure. It's when do I need your permission? I, as a broker dealer, Chris, do not need your permission to trade with you as a dealer or principal. So that's just, okay, so that's, that's saying, that's just, I just have to disclose it to you that I'm the other party. Yeah. But you know, I don't have to. Yeah, I don't have to get your permission. So okay. So this then, has about permission. So then wouldn't it be if I'm selling it out of my bucket? Well, again, if I'm a broker dealer selling or buying into my bucket, my inventory, that's disclosure, not permission. Got you. Okay. So I need a, I need a, I'm going to write no, Broker down. dealers are representing themselves. Investment advisors are not. So if I'm a fiduciary trading against you, broker mm -hmm. dealers aren't fiduciaries. Investment advisors are. Got you. Okay. So that's okay. right. So I need to, that's okay. You, it's not a big deal, but you also don't forget another test taking trick, our Sesame Street trick. Which is not like the others. Yeah, we got broker dealer, investment advisor, broker dealer, broker dealer. And the investment so, advisor is always going to have a higher standard than a broker dealer. So I keep missing, I guess, between whether it is disclosure or if it's required. Okay. Broker dealers, disclosure. Disclosure. Okay. All right. Investment advisors, permission. Okay. Oh, cool. Uh, right. Individual purchased a variable life policy 10 years ago. The policy has a 500,000 face amount, which has now grown to 525. Drew the performance of the selected separate account subaccounts. Three years ago, the insurer borrowed 50,000 against the policy, which has never been uh, repaid. The effect of this is the total death benefit today is, and this is very much a uh, test question. Great forward math. What's that? That's a straightforward math question. It sure is. Uh, we, you know, so now you got to decide. Uh, 475. Like the, yeah, right on. That's right. So you should have known you had to use the 50. And then you just got to decide where you're going to take the 50 against. Now, that is very much a test question. Uh, all the following statements regarding Ginny May pass-throughs are true, except. All of them are true, except. Uh, C. Uh, Jenny Mays are considered to be right on because they are because the they're full faith and credit. Absolutely. Yeah. And a trust, the person who established this tr the trust and decides the terms of the trust is. You are the trustee. Well, the trustee is going to be. Uh, You're the, that, that's the benefit of it. So well, they're the one who's going to run it day to day. But the person who's actually setting it up is the grantor. There you go. Yeah. Because the grantor uh, well, can also be the trustee. You're sure, that's exactly correct. Yeah. Okay. Which of long time statements regarding risk diversification is least accurate? Least accurate.
Diversification cannot successfully remove all portfolio risk. Yeah, remember, risk prevails despite diversification. Yeah. Uh, certain documents belonging to a federally covered investment advisor must be kept for a period of time after the enterprise closes. Those documents are... Certain documents belong to, must be kept for Those documents are, C, the responsibility of right the investment on. advisor. Right on. A client of a broker dealer calls his agent and submits an order to purchase a thousand shares of a Peruvian copper mining company. As the order ticket is being prepared, the agent notices that this is a non exempt, unregistered stock. The agent should. Uh, Okay, hold on. So this is a unsolicited. That's notice. correct. Yes, this is an unsolicited. So you can do this because this is the yeah. customer saying they want to do this. That's it, correct. So now you well, again. So what now? What do you got to do? It's an exempt transaction. Yeah. Right. So the remote. So the legal ease is such that once you get the right answer, which you just did, Chris, then you just got to once you project the right answer, say, okay, what's NASA's way of saying what I just said? Yeah. <laughs> I had somebody we were doing very much the similar thing. What'd she say? She said something was totally like street slang for the right answer. <laughs> and I, I forget what she said, but I said, okay, so you're correct. However, we know that is not how it's going to be said in legalese. <laughs> yeah. What's the legal terms for it? Uh, one of the surest ways to explain a client that an investment opportunity presented by via social media is likely to be a scam is. One of the surest ways to explain to a client that an investment Okay, so my mind wants to say you can't promise a high return. Yeah, that's a red flag, right? That's yeah. you're, you're absolutely right. That is okay. indeed. That okay. is indeed the uh, red flag. Okay, all right. But see, uh, just just for just to talk it through, why wouldn't an escrow account at an established bank be a red? That's flag? That's a good thing. Though? That's a good thing. If I told you that your money, I say, Chris, we have an escrow account, so don't make that check payable to me. Make that check payable to J.P. Morgan. Yeah. Okay. So that's a good thing to say. That's okay. Good. I've By just way, never heard that before. Be, and then, you know, if you were doing your due diligence, you might say, well, Dean, before I actually, you know, send the check, I'd like to talk to your uh, bank, bank officer at the escrow account to make sure that money that you told me you raised is already there. Got you. Okay. Right? Okay. So you're cool. going to be doing your real estate yeah, yeah. deals. Like, you know, I, we were talking about your, you know, future conglomerate and, you know, maybe you're doing a real estate deal and you I say, Hey, listen, I'd like to invest with you, Chris. Uh, what you say to buy the apartment building, we need 13 million and you've raised 10. Mm -hmm. You say yes. And uh, I say, indeed, in fact, that 10 is in an escrow account. I go, oh, well, that's great. So let me just, you know, call over there and see what's going on with that escrow account. By the way, that doesn't have to be the case. I've done investment, Chris, where I say, listen, Chris, don't give me the million now. I've got 10, but I haven't called for the money yet. Yeah. So, you know, I'm telling people <laughs> when I'm going to call them, right? You know, so. All right. D. Yep, you're correct. One of the surest ways uh, an investor has a portfolio diversified among many different asset classes. Oh, sounds smart. If there's an immediate need for cash, which of the following would most likely uh, be most liquid? Most liquid. Money market? Yeah, right on. That's cash and cash equivalents. Yeah, that's exactly right. Okay. Uh, a client with a net worth of $5 million is compensating an investment advisor with a performance-based fee. Under according to the Investment Advisor Act of 1940, the arrangement must be based on. Okay, so this is, it is prohibited because they meet the threshold. That's exactly right. Okay, so that takes out D. Yeah. Okay, capital gains minus capital losses, including both realized and, I don't know if it's unrealized gains though. Capital gains minus capital losses, including both realized and unrealized gains and losses. No, you can't you can't use unrealized gains. A period of no less than six months, the S and P five hundred index performance. A client with a net worth of five million is compensated for a performance based fee according to 
this arrangement must be based on a period of no less than six months. I want to say A, Dean. No, there's no such thing about the uh, six months. It's actually 12 months. And so, it, so it's 12 months? Okay. And it's B. Don't tell me the answer is B. Is the answer B? Yep. Yep. Damn. I, so that was my first choice, but I, know. I thought unrealized gains don't factor. No, I can in. take the mark. That's what's the danger, right? Is I'm going to take a mark on an unrealized gain and make you pay me for it. But then, you know, you want to make sure there's a clawback. that You know, you can get back that money if it goes against me. Got you. Okay. Uh, prospective client has been interviewing a number of investment advisors and wishes to see your firm's investment policy statement. Your investment policy statement would probably include which of the following headings? All right. So I know the selection criteria is not part of the IPS. Yep. Okay. So that takes out three. Yep. All right. So that takes out C whoa, and D. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Well, once you go down that road, um, I think it de depends on what they mean by investment selection criteria. I think you might be reading that a little too tightly, like, you know, a particular security rather than just the overall selection yes. criteria. Okay. Yes. So I, I think, but let's see if right. that would work out. If you took out three, what you want to do, that would leave you with uh, so when you're going to go do that. So the other thing now we're going to do is check and say, does A and B viable? Because if not, we got to put three back in there, right? So you're telling me it's going to have one and two, which it would, yeah. two and four, which it would. So that means I have to take, now I have to take one, two, and four. One, two, and four. That means you have to have three then. Yes. Right. Okay, so then D, all right. Uh, so when you, when you go with that multiple, which you've been very strong in. So the, the only thing about that, tr once you go with three and you toss it out, you know, you're going to, you're going to almost miss a question almost by the nature of tossing that out. So okay. as soon as you catch yourself, you could say, okay, if I'm tossing out three, then that means I'm left with A and B. Just let me look at those and say, okay, so one of those has got to be viable. And now I say, okay, well, they're both true. So that means I'm back into three. But hold on though. So, but monitoring procedures you have to have that in the that's right that's right so that's why okay got you all right uh which types of accounts are billed a single fee that includes a group of services such a as fee? yeah right on boom yeah straight just p.s that's why most people have to take a damn 65 right there you go yeah, here, here i am <laughs> accounts, right? that's, that's exactly what most people got their butt in the chair taking the test for uh, an investment advisor rep has set up an initial meeting with a prospective advisory client. An important part of that meeting is gathering client data. One of the following items, which is generally considered to be the most important for preparing suitable recommendations is. Your risk tolerance? Yeah, they always want that one. That's just one of those, that, you know. Yeah. Uh, a sale or an offer to sell would not include. Uh, D. Right on. Very testable. If it was accessible, you, you can go back and get more. That's right. Which belongs to regarding standard deviation is true which of the following regarding standard deviation is true okay so okay so the standard deviation the smaller the deviation the less risky it is Okay, so that so D is not right. That's correct. Okay. It is not correct. So investments with the same expected return would not necessarily have the same level of risk and standard deviation. Okay, that's that potentially is true. Yeah. Standard deviation is well, no, that is true. 
standard deviation is expressed in dollars. Is it? It's expressed in percent, so. Yes, excellent, excellent. So wouldn't it be, isn't the answer B? Well, it's not expressed in dollars. You just told me it's not expressed in dollars. You just said it's expressed in percentages. You just told me that. So, but, but, but hold on. Oh, which oh, which is true. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, the answer is C. It's C. <laughs> yeah, okay. C. The answer is C. Listen, okay. we, we don't want to give up questions like that, right? No, the answer is C. No, because I, yeah, I, I read that right out the right way. way, and I stopped myself. I was like, wait, hold on. No, it's expressed. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Woohoo! Let's see. Seventy okay. percent right. plus. Let's see what uh, what it looks like. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. Wow. Let's go. My friend, I didn't think it was that great. Let's go. Man, fantastic. Oh, you should be very, very proud. All right. Very, I very proud. I think the that. only one there was one uh, that I think we checked for review. I think it was 100. It was, yeah, it was inflation versus, uh, I think, uh, per, per, uh, appreciation. Uh, we passed I it. We passed that it. One. Uh, excellent performance. Let's see where my button is for. Are you looking for a hundred? Uh, was it was a question a hundred? Well, that's when you had checked. Yeah, a hundred. Okay, well, let's go back and see which one of us. Uh, I think I wouldn't worry about it. Obviously, we got. You know, we, this is what we dream of: is margin of uh, as safety. Oh, so no, this isn't. No. I think I, I think that you said appreciation. I said inflation. So yeah. So I don't know which one that is. It's uh, good enough for us, though. Can you send that to me by chance? Sure, absolutely. It, uh, it's a commercial Zoom account, Chris. So it'll be, uh, let us stop recording so we don't have to share our backstage business with anybody. Uh, are you sure you want to stop recording? The answer is yes.